Hi, we're here today uh, with the MIDI Association and Laura Eskaday. And we have just a few questions for you to answer if you can, Laura, that would be great. So can you, tell us, can you tell us what was your first encounter with MIDI? Okay, so it was in college, uh, circa 2000. And I decided to take a class on music production. And it was Cakewalk Pro 9, I believe, was the software program that we we're using. And I just remember the teacher kept talking about MIDI, and I really didn't grasp the concept. I was like, I, I don't understand what this is. What do you mean? Like, I play the violin. I understand the sounds coming from the violin. What do you mean that I can play other sounds using MIDI? And it took me a minute and then I just, one day I had this aha moment when someone brought a keyboard, I think it was a, a Yamaha motif and they used the MIDI on it and they started playing different sounds attached to the computer. And it was shortly after that, I started to get into Reason and got myself uh, an M-Audio Oxygen 8 controller and started playing all the synthesizers in Reason with the controller. So my mind was blown because I had no idea that I could use one keyboard to control a whole bunch of things. I thought I needed to buy all of these expensive keyboards. And at that time I couldn't afford all the expensive key keyboards. So um, lucky me, I learned how to use software and use how to use controllers with MIDI. So could you tell us a little bit about how MIDI has enabled your career? I mean, you've done some amazing things. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of the experiences you've had in using MIDI with actually some of the most famous people on the planet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first I'll just speak to myself. You know, I'm an artist and a controllerist and I perform using a lot of MIDI stuff. Um, currently I'm utilizing MIDI through uh, a program called MIDI Merlin so that I can play my violin and create MIDI on the other end of it. So I'm playing synthesizers with my violin using something called MIDI Merlin. And I'm also uh, using my violin through the MIDI Mer Merlin app to control the Unreal Gaming Engine, which is a VR environment and I'm controlling the images on the screen using my violin all through MIDI. Um, so I'm really into just controlling a lot of different things at the same time. I use MIDI to control my lighting rig as well. Um, the video, of course, I use it to control all different kinds of sounds and synths. Um, I really have gotten into MPE, so I'm using uh, MIDI, uh, I've got the Continue Mini, um, which is my new favorite thing, and I'm actually playing the Continue Mini with my violin, uh, which is very expressive. Um, so I use MIDI for all different kinds of things, and my MIDI rig is pretty crazy for my live shows because I've got MIDI going everywhere, lighting, video, audio, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and then with the artists that I've worked with, uh, you know, MIDI definitely comes into play. When I'm uh, creating a show with an artist, we use a MIDI controller to trigger two systems at the same time. So they'll be running in sync. Like I'm working on American Idol right now and I use a MIDI controller that uh, has MIDI go to two separate uh, machines and fires off the same MIDI note to both of them, which um, before we used to have to use a software program and daisy chain the MIDI from one interface to the other. And now with the eye connectivity stuff, we can just go straight into the two laptops, which is such a game changer. It's amazing. Um, so I use MIDI really heavily to trigger songs, to do effects, um, change volumes, things like that on stage uh, with, my, with my clients or behind the scenes, depending on, on who the artist is. I recently also performed at the Grammys and was in the Grammy house band and used quite a bit of MIDI for that to trigger samples um, of different songs, to uh, do effects, to have uh, just different control over the songs and to 
uh, play the songs for the band before the uh, the moment came up so I could cue them in their in-ears and all that was done uh, via MIDI so and then with some of the artists that I've worked with on tour that have a big rig um, they've got MIDI all on stage they're controlling all different types of sounds in Ableton Live um, you know MIDI keyboards drum pads you name it so uh, that really comes into play because it's it's very flexible, right? They can just have one drum controller and for every song, the presets all automatically change. And uh, same thing for the uh, keyboard controller, all the presets can just automatically change per song or within the song itself. And um, it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to do that using MIDI. So I have a great story about American Idol. We did an interview with one of the techs who worked on American Idol a few years ago, and he was testing out the system, and he sent an all notes on message on all channels in the system. And you know what happened? All oh, four chairs, all four chairs turned around. The chairs are actually it's a it's it's an activator, but it's actually they actually use MIDI to ch trigger the chairs. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I well, think that's just awesome. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. But wait, that actually brings another thing to mind, like uh, pyro and lasers at big shows. We send MIDI yep. out to trigger that stuff as well. So it's just very, very useful um, across the board. And there's a lot more flexibility with MIDI rather than time code for the lighting and the video. So a lot of people have moved to using MIDI to trigger um, their scenes for lighting and video. Absolutely, I mean, that the, the whole usage of, uh, you know, of Ableton Live and now with the incorporation of Max into Ableton Live, it's really connecting up video to the world of MIDI. And it just, it's amazing how MIDI just continues to grow and evolve. Uh, it's it's just so powerful. Cool. Absolutely. Awesome. So I, I think you spoke a lot about how MIDI has enabled your creativity and how you use MIDI today. Any final words? I mean, you started off from a, from somebody who was actually, you know, didn't get introduced to MIDI until you were in college and mm -hmm. knew nothing about it. Uh, to being one of the on-demand persons in the MIDI industry for setting up really complex shows. I mean, there's a lot of people who will be, you know, watching this on the MIDI Association channel, and, and they'll want to know, how, you know, how did you get from, I don't know anything, to I'm now the person that, you know, uh, people like Jay-Z call on you to do things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm a big nerd, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, Always you know, helps. there was no, there was no YouTube back then when I first started learning. So, uh, I started buying a lot of books on MIDI, uh, the computer music tutorial, Curtis Rose, you know, just started getting all different kinds of books and magazines, sound on sound, uh, which I was actually blessed to be in, um, this past month. And that was just such a, uh, mind-blowing experience because I just have read that magazine for for decades now um, but yeah just reading uh, just reading really just uh, bringing in magazines and books reading learning you know, working with other people just constantly um, just learning and growing and then I when I moved to LA I started working in tech support at M Audio and M Audio had a lot of MIDI stuff, um, MIDI Man, the old MIDI Man. So it was like right when it changed from MIDI Man to M Audio. And so I had to do tech support for all of the MIDI things that they had, interfaces. And so I got to, to learn about MIDI then because, um, you know, I had, I had to. People were calling me about their MIDI interfaces being broken or not working right, and I'd have to, to tech it. So it was just a trial by fire, really. I just learned on the spot and then you know just kept growing from there and, and learning more and then of course being put in these scenarios with these big shows and just being thrown into the fire you know every single time you just figure stuff out you know and then i'm lucky enough to have a great network of people as well and i have a company called electronic creatives and uh, i've parlayed what i do um, with artists into a company and uh, so now I've got a, a bunch of people that I've trained and then go out on the road and, and work with artists and 
So we all have each other's backs and if we ever have a question or need to know something, someone on the team is going to know because it's really impossible to know everything out there. I mean, some people come close, but there's just a lot of information, especially now in this day and age uh, with YouTube and all of the different controllers and things that are coming out. It's like impossible to keep up. So uh, I pride myself on finding the people and knowing what they're good at. And then if I have a question now, I'll be like, hey, I think you know about this topic because you've researched this or you've used this certain controller on tour. I've never used it, you know. So um, it's just a constant uh, learning and growth and just continuing to, to learn and grow. Well, on behalf of the 20,000 members of the MIDI Association, we want to thank you for sharing your, your insight on MIDI. And it's, it's really an inspiration to see how far you've come in such a very short period of time. So thank you so oh. much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. What a great idea to do this. And all of the people involved in this are such incredible artists and controllerists. And yeah, what a fantastic idea. I just... I just love it. I, I, I love the sharing of knowledge and I love community. So very amazing work that you guys are doing. Oh, thank you.